Hey, today we are in the company of the beautiful Bealara Peggy Ruth Carpenter. Mine is the named cultivar Morning Joy. It is one of the most popular ones based on the fact that it is so, so vigorous. But I am not only in the company of Peggy Ruth Carpenter, I am also in the company of Karin's Orchids and the Orchid Saga for this specific care collab. Now, I love this orchid so very much, but it's not like I have three of them. This orchid was divided in June of 2021. She was so vigorous, the pots were getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I thought I would give her a good cleanup in June of this year, divide her and get her ready and settled and send off two divisions to other viewers. And here they are, just as well. We can do an update. They are doing great. They are fully rooted in. However, this is about a care collab. I will show you images of the video that I did on the division, the cleanup, the rejuvenation, the whole process. I will put some screenshots or some B-roll footage into this video, just so that maybe there's something to look at other than my orchid, which is not in bloom yet, but you can see Spike Central. One, two, three, four. So every division has a spike coming, which is fabulous. It is just a little bit too hot at this point in time to still ship them out. Anyway, what am I doing to get them to grow well? And what are the quirks of the Aliceara Peggy Ruth Carpenter? Because I bought her as Bealara and she has since been switched to Aliceara. And I wonder why. Because as the parentage goes, Bealara is a combination of the Brassia, Cochlioda, Miltonia and Odontoglossum. So why switch it to Aliciara? Because that would be Brassium, Miltonia and Oncidium. Well, that is because the Odontoglossum has been switched and turned into an Oncidium. So there is no need for an additional Odontoglossum parent because that is now an Oncidium. And suddenly we have only three parents as opposed to four. What happened with the Cochlioda? It's possibly an Oncidium as well by now. So from Bealara to Aliciara, on the webpage of the creator of this hybrid, Milton Carpenter, he still has it as Bealara, Peggy Ruth Carpenter, and it is one of his most popular, popular hybrids because of how vigorous it is, because how easily it can be divided and propagated that way as well. To my understanding, Milton Carpenter of Everglade Orchids in Florida isn't actually in the retail business anymore, but I understand that he is still dappling away with creating lots and lots of hybrids. So it's not like he's totally inactive, but I was always wondering who Peggy Ruth is. Maybe it's his wife, his grandma, his mom, or it's possibly his daughter. That I could not determine. And Milton being his name, nothing to do with Miltonia, you know, just so happens that his name sounds very similar. Anyway, that aside, so this care collab together with Karin's Orchids and the Orchid Saga, I will tell you how I grow mine and mine grows outdoors all year round. And of course, Karin's Orchids and the Orchid Saga will have their method of growing and their environment. So I do encourage you to check the description below because I will be linking the channel and then eventually as their videos upload, I will be changing those links to the corresponding videos on the care collab of Bealara, Peggy Ruth Carpenter. Yes, I still call her Bealara. That is what she has on my tag. So if I intermix Bealara and Aliciara, we're talking about the same thing. I already mentioned that I have her outside all year round and my winters can drop down to five degrees Celsius. And that is the important thing about knowing the parentage of your Nothogenus. What is the makeup of the orchid? What can it tolerate? Knowing it's got cochleata in it, knowing it's got odontoglossum in it, those are cool growers. However, you've got brassia, and then you have the warm growing Miltonia parent in there. So you've got warm, intermediate, and cool. It can take a variety of temperature ranges, and none of the temperature ranges are actually the ones that trigger blooming. It doesn't mean that it actually needs a temperature drop to bloom, which is awesome, especially if you're growing indoors. The reason I have mine growing outdoors is because of space issues indoors. This one can tolerate the five degrees Celsius temperatures drop. My other ones can't. And indoors over the winter, it gets a little bit crowded. Space is valuable real estate. And if any orchid can handle the low winter temperatures, it stays outside. This one can. 
the maximum temperature ranges as hot as possible. I very, very rarely in the summer go above 40 degrees Celsius. What I do have though are hot winds. What I also have to deal with is for the majority of the year, very, very low humidity. So the warmer it gets from the months of April through to September, October, my humidity drops. It can be an average of 30%. And that is why you see the leaf tips are scorched. This is not sun because her sun influx is mainly direct sun in the cooler months of the year when the angle of the sun drops to such a degree that it actually enters my blooming alley. And that is where this orchid lives, sometimes more to the west side of the passage and sometimes to the south facing shelf. Now you will also notice the color of my orchid now in comparison to the footage from when I was doing the rejuvenation and the cleanup. She is much, much greener. And that is because she was not exposed to the amount of light that she is capable of tolerating because she was recovering from the major chop dividing and reset. So as not to stress her out too much, the importance was to get her established back into the pots with all the divisions happily creating roots, no additional stress, but you can see that even lesser light and greener, lusher looking foliage, she is still going to bloom. I may only get four blooms per spike, maybe three, as opposed to the norm, which could be five to six, but bloom she will. So for anyone that's considering an orchid, but doesn't have exactly the right light influx and thinks that this one won't bloom, not a problem at all. Even after the radical treatment from June, here we are three months later approximately, and every single division is going to bloom. There's three growths in this pot. So far, I have two spikes. I am anticipating the third spike in the growth in the back. This division was taken with one new growth starting, roots are in the pot, and we've got one spike on this growth. Same here, one growth was on the division, roots are in the pot, and this one wants to bloom with two spikes. So you see, to get this orchid to bloom, it's not necessary to have it exposed to such bright light or any kind of sun, it will bloom anyway. But the light has to be consistent. And that is why my south facing blooming alley is ideal. It has consistent light, even if there is no direct sun. But for the divisions to recover, I have tucked them up behind other pots with much, much larger orchids in front of them to block even more sun. Otherwise, my leaves would be exactly as what you would see in the footage when I was dividing her. So let's just pretend these were not divisions. They were established plants in the pot. She is so vigorous, she gets 300 parts per million of fertilizer every time the reservoir has been absorbed. And because of the Miltonia parent, she is very, very thirsty. Gracias, we know, are very, very vigorous. That is where she gets all that from and very, very thirsty as well. So. This one likes its water, it likes its fertilizer when in active growth. And you can see that the growth is actually not fully developed. There is no bulb swelling at the base and yet there is a spike. So it's full on 300 parts per million until she blooms out and then she will start to produce the next new growth. But there's something I wanted to mention about this orchid and before I forget, because maybe you have run into a similar issue and you thought your Bialara is dead or dying. This may necessarily not be the case because in all the years that I've had this orchid, she has a quirk and she will deplete and dump her roots ever so often. And then all of a sudden the pseudobulbs are gonna go all papery thin and all shriveled up. And I'm going to show by the example of the oldest pseudobulb that she has since she came into my collection, this one here, this one has been in an inverted C probably three times since I've had this orchid. So desiccated, paper thin profile, nothing in the pseudobulb whatsoever. Inverted, bending over, and you would think, well, that's it, I've messed her up. But no, even in my repot rejuvenation video of June, these bulbs here were wrinkled and I had to actually tie them to a stake to make sure that the orchid is stable in the pot. And I'm gonna show some pictures of having tied them up. And you can see here is still a tie, but these bulbs back here, they're okay. They're not getting garroted. Whereas in this division right here, the bulb was plumping up again so fast 
I was starting to get an indentation in the bulb where the tie was. But since I've taken it off, you can already see the bulb is plumping back up even where the tie was. So when this orchid, if you have it, or if you're going to get it, starts to deplete in the pseudobulbs, of course, we then know there's something wrong in the pot with the roots. So this orchid every once in a while will just dump her roots and start again. You can see I am growing in LECA and self-watering. And in this case, now with these divisions, I have decided to put very small LECA in with the orchid so that she can always have access to water. And my reservoir is always about four centimeters, two inches full with fertilized water because of what she is doing growth-wise and root-wise. In the winter, all I do is flush her occasionally I don't want my microfiber to dry out. I just keep it a little bit damp, but I do flush very, very regularly just to maintain the microfiber and the characteristics of the LECA and the wicking for the coming season. So I'm not fertilizing over the winter when she is not in active growth. It is just tidying her over. But you can see that this orchid, despite its little trick with regards to desiccating and we think we've made a mistake, it will bounce back once the new roots get into the pot and can start hydrating again. It almost seems like because of the parentage, this orchid wants a regular rejuvenation. It's like you can't really grow this into a specimen orchid because, okay, one part will climb out, one part will grow straight. In this case here, we do have a climber. That's another quirk. We have a climber here. We don't have a climber on this piece and that can change in a moment's notice with the next growth but i found that in my previous pot my orchid was on one side going up and out of the pot and the other side it was staying so nicely and contained lots of parents lots of different attributes happening with regards to the growth cycle but no the one thing that i find super important the orchid isn't dead or dying necessarily when you see the pseudobulbs shrivel up it's probably growing a new growth it's time to get the dead roots out and start and reset the orchid. This is the only Oncidium that I know in my collection that does that. But as you can see with my oldest, oldest bulb over here, it's still back. The reason it's brown is because tissue has died in the process of it trying to plump up again and desiccate and plump up again. But it is firm. There's, a, there's no rot here at all. So if you have one, don't worry about it. It is a vigorous orchid and the pepper fragrance is divine. If you like the fragrance of freshly cracked pepper, that is exactly what these blooms smell like. There's another thing I just want to mention about the blooms. You will see what the blooms were when I bought them. I have a picture from back in 2018 and these were the blooms I saw in the garden center. The more light this orchid gets, the blooms change color. They go from a washed spotty look to a much more vibrant spotting with the pinks and the purples, but then also the petals and the sepals will get a little bit more of a lavender blush to them and they will become very, very vibrant. So that is something to note as well. If you have an orchid that you bought as a Bialara Peggy Ruth Carpenter and she is white with a spotting, there's nothing wrong with that. It's still a Bialara Peggy Ruth Carpenter. If you see the same hybrid elsewhere in pictures and it has a different color with all the blushing going on, that is because of how much light the orchid had prior to blooming. So it'll be interesting to see what these blooms come out like this time. I've had the pink blushes every time she's bloomed for me after I bought her. I thought I had a different orchid the next time she bloomed in my care, but I know of course it wasn't. It's just she's had more light. But this time around, the color of the leaves will tell you that mine hasn't had as much light as I normally would give her. I'm gonna be very curious to see how the blooms come out in this bloom cycle. Unfortunately, we did not make it in time for this care collab. But I want to mention one last thing, if you're still here, thank you so, so much. Pests, this is a bit of a mealybug magnet. And one of the things that I find very, very important to watch out for is mealybugs that are in the stem here. You see this brack right here? When you peel it back, of course, it's a very, very delicate maneuver because you don't want to mess up the bud, but this is where they sit. So if you're getting bud blast, but the rest of the orchid is looking absolutely fabulous and there's nothing wrong with her and you're getting bud blast, there's a tiny, tiny little sheath, little brack right by the stem of the bud. And if you peel that back, you might be finding some mealybugs. But other than that, she's not a pest problem. It's only when she comes into bloom 
that there could be an issue that the blooms don't fully bloom out because of that little nook and cranny where the mealies will sit on a Bialara Peggy Ruth Carpenter. Thank you so very much if you've made it all the way through. I also want to say thank you so much to Karin's Orchids and the Orchid Saga for taking the time to do their videos. I am going to be super interested to see how theirs are doing. I know that somebody has blooms. That's why we're also here today. Get this done while somebody has blooms. Your time with me is very much appreciated. Thank you. If you have any questions, if I was distracted, didn't finish a thought process, please, please make mention of that in the comments below. I'll be very happy to elaborate. In the meantime, I wish you a beautiful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.